If you make 400 grand and you're in this room, you should not feel good about yourself as a father and as a husband. Now, could I have said it a different way? Should I be saying things differently? I'm asking you as a peer. Why do so many people want me to go to jail? Why, why do I get them? Why do I get so many? I don't do it for social gain because I know there's a call. Okay? That is exactly why you do. Because, because <laughs> and, and but, but let me just tell you, when I go to sleep at night, yeah, I, I kind of second guess it. But I know at the end of my lifetime, I'm gonna be like, Grant Cardone stood for one thing. He stood up and he would get back. Great to have you here, man. Always good to be here, man. Dude, you are a true power player. I, you know, I ran, I discovered you, I don't know. I think it was on Instagram. Probably. And you kept <laughs> popping and kept popping and you kept popping up. And I'm like, dude, I, I respect this guy. Mm. So I didn't know anything about you. I didn't really know what you were doing. And, you know, I think the, the, the important thing for me to remember when I was watching you, what, one, I liked your content. I like the colors. I like that, the stuff you were doing with your hair. You know, it got my attention. Yeah. But the thing that I respected the most, okay, where you got my trust was because of the frequency. Mm. Like you were hitting. I said, oh, shit, okay. Bang, and boom, you hit again, and then again. And another one, as my friend DJ Khaled says, another yeah. one. You know, and I'm like, okay. In the first three or four times I saw you, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And then I'm like, okay, this guy's real. He's serious. And then weeks went on or months went on. I'm like, okay, this is a real player. So, Hey, man. Yeah, appreciate you're you, You're a true man. power player, dude. Thank I, I you. have massive respect for what you're doing and the way you're raising your family, your marriage, your operation in Vegas. Yeah. Um, what you're doing, not just on as an influencer, uh, but also in social media, uh, with education and with real estate. Yeah. So which one of those you want to start with first? What, oh, what are you man. most passionate about at this very second? I mean, obviously, you do it all for family and faith and everything else like that's kind of like the the end goal for everything i think like social media and business and educate those are all tools to further everything else but yeah i think uh to, to your point social media was how you found me and yeah i think that you know that's how i found you yeah it's like without social media we're not here and, yeah, and people yeah. aren't watching this so i yeah. think it's such an important tool that people just kind of take for granted yeah you're how old 34. Okay. So you, and you had a baseball career. Yep. I didn't yep. know that, but, but then, you know, so that was cool. How, what position? I was second base. Okay. Did you I, ever try to be a pitcher? Um, I pitched in high school, but yeah, just not, yeah. not enough juice in the ball. No, no. I was no, throwing no, about 85 and, and that was it. That was all you could do. Yeah. Then, so did you have a good arm or, or, or they put you on second? Cause you didn't have an arm. I, I had a good enough arm to play other positions, uh, but my arm wasn't accurate. Okay. <laughs> so I needed to play. You, you couldn't accurately throw to first. Well, no. Only thing you could do is hit first base. Hit first base. Good oh. glove, good bat. What'd you have? I had a good bat throughout college. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I was D one. Uh, Meaning, what? What's D one? Division one player. So okay. I became an All American my freshman year. Oh wow! Um, I was the conference freshman of the year. Then I led the conference in home runs and stolen bases my oh, junior okay. year. Okay. Okay. So I was hitting well. And yeah. And um, you know, I got into pro baseball and. Pro baseball is a little bit different than college baseball. Yeah, how so? Well, one, you don't use metal bats anymore. You use uh -huh. wood bats. Uh -huh. So a lot harder to hit with wood. Your power kind of uh, isn't what it used to be. Uh -huh. So it was just a totally different game. And it's it's all uh, worldwide at that point. You know, you go from Oh, they're pulling from yeah, you're Dominican. Dominicans, yeah. Colombians, like everybody. And so you like, you go from thinking, oh, I'm the best person in my town so I'm the best person like in the conference yeah, yeah. to like, oh, damn, I'm, I'm facing all these guys who literally do nothing but play baseball. Uh -huh. It's different. Yeah. And, and so and would you learn playing baseball uh, competitively and at, at the college level and, and professional level um, that, that you use today? Yeah, I would say the, the biggest thing you learn is discipline and frequency. Like you said, it's like the best players are so consistent. Every day they show up. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how they feel. It don't matter how yesterday went, what the, the haters in the stands say. Right, right. Dude, they just show up to work. They do their thing. And that's why they're great. Mm -hmm. How many, what, what professionals, 163 games a year? Or? 162 in the big leagues. Okay. Yep. It's is a that, lot of games. Is that before, it, it, that's before uh, championships? Yeah. And that's not even counting spring training or... Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. like so 163 games. out of out of 365 days. That's probably more than most people work, right? Yeah, it's half the year. F five times 52. Yeah. Yeah. Not well. Well, the crazy thing is too. You play 162 games in like a 180 day period. Uh huh. So you get one or two days off a month. Wow. Yeah. Traveling. 
you traveling every day. And then how brutal uh, are they at that level about replacing people if they're not if they're if they're not hitting, they oh, got bro. hurt. I mean, you're out like that. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of I don't know. I got used to that mindset, right? Where it was very cutthroat and business like and yo, if you're not producing, there's somebody else who wants your spot. Uh-huh. And I've definitely taken that to business where, you know, I've told our employees, it's like, yo, we're part of a team and we want everyone to do great. And we want to accomplish big goals. Right. But this is not like a family where everybody, you got to keep your family no matter what. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're stuck with your kids. Your family is what, what Until is. they leave. But your team, you know, it's like the moment there's somebody better. Right, right. You're not cutting it anymore. Like you got to make a change. Right. You got you got to hire and fire the way the MLB does. Yeah. So um, Aaron Judd, what, what, how big was that deal he got? One hundred. He got like three hundred and sixty million. Yeah. So I don't know if you saw that video I did on on what he would do with his taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I did it again on Lamar Jackson. Okay. So I did it uh, on on Aaron. I told Johnny Johnny the camera guy. Yes. Yeah. Um, I said, look, we're going to do this video on Aaron. What he should do with his income. Mm-hmm to prevent him having taxes and if he gets another deal deferring all that with the depreciation and i said look johnny there's no chance aaron's going to see it but his buddies will yeah other ball players will other young guys well well, we posted it and literally a rod hits me i don't know three or four days after i posted i saw actually i saw a rod in uh beverly hills at the the milken uh conference and uh a Rod says, had a video that you put up on Judd. He called me the next day <laughs> and said, Is this guy for real? Yeah. Um, what, when you were in the game, how, what was your biggest salary as a professional? Dude, so I was only in the minor league. So I okay. was making nothing. I mean, I was making 1200 bucks a month playing in the minor leagues. 1200 1200 So you're funding your, who's taking care of where you live, your food? We do. We still have to cover that. Oh my God, dude! It's crazy. So trainers, trainers, uh, PT, or they they take care of all. I mean, when you're in the season, like yeah, they they got the the trainers and stuff. But uh-huh. in the off season, however you want to train, Recover- it's on you. Recovery and all that, you, you got to do it on your own. Oh my God, dude! It's crazy, and that's that was how I got into business because, in the hopes of becoming a, a yeah a, a superstar. Yeah, and you know, back then I got drafted in 2010, so. You know, that was what the minor leaguers made. And then if you got to the bigs, the minimum salary was like half a million a year, right? That was your first few you years. Make that, you make that every every month now. Yeah, it's crazy. And right? so- with, thank, God, thank God you didn't make it. I know, right? <laughs> and I could do this forever, yeah, right? Yeah, right. So I ended up, uh, you know- Because at 34, you're, 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 you're getting to the end of your career in baseball now. If you're lucky. And you're, start, you're really starting your I'm career. I'm starting my career. Yeah. Yeah, so it definitely was a blessing for sure. But- you know, you look at it back then when I was 21, when I got drafted, not making any money. And I'm like, I got to go and work and make money. Like, I don't yeah. know what I'm going to do. But the problem was I couldn't get a job because nobody's going to hire you for six months out of the year. Right, right. So I was forced to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. So what do those guys do? Like, like if they're not entrepreneurial, like are they selling cars, bagging groceries, working Dude, at Costco? Yeah. Most of them will do like baseball lessons. Uh-huh. You know, they're going to work at the batting cage or work for a high school team. But dude, I mean, most of these guys, if they could make like 10 grand in the off season, yeah. they were happy because that was going to help cover their expenses so, in season. So you're playing in the minors, you're playing, and then we'll move on. Uh, I, I'm yeah. just fascinated with baseball, but but you're in the minors, you're playing how many games? Uh, uh, how many, how many? Um, 140 something. Okay. So yeah. you're pay, getting paid 1200. Yes. To, to play 12 games a month. No, 28 or 29 games a month. Cause you only play. Uh, oh, oh, right. Right. Six months a year. Now. So you're getting, paid. and I only got paid while we played. So I made 7,000 a year. Dude, it's insane. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you guys around here, well, I pay you be grateful, bro. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I tell people that all the time. I'm like, you think you're in poverty? Well, like, you don't even know, man. Like, no, you, you make you were, moral you welfare. Were, you were a tenth of minimum wage, basically. We did now, the math. It was like now, three bucks you, an hour. You were making more money than these Louis cost you. What did these Louis cost? Twelve hundred, probably. <laughs> wow, dude, that's crazy. Yeah. I've never bought a pair of Louis, by the way. I, how did you just, How did you justify that? These are these are these just a nice wide wide fit um, uh, Zania shoe. Well, how much probably are those? Two hundred eighty five dollars. Oh, okay. But I Which was, I thought they were expensive. I was just with Jared before this, and he had his Christian Dior's on. So somebody probably gave him to him. He's 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 doing well. I don't believe he's got Christians. I mean, I don't know. 
Um, actually, I do get a lot of gifts from people too. Yeah, yeah, but those aren't gifts. You no, bought, I bought those. those. You bought those. I yourself. bought those. I can tell. Okay. You, you know. So, so okay. Let's talk. Let's talk real estate. Okay. Okay. Why? Why do you love real estate so much? Yeah. You and, know. And what part of the real estate game are you playing? Yeah. So I started out um, as a realtor in 2010. So I knew I was getting drafted. I knew I wasn't going to make any money over there. So I said, let me go and just, I guess, be a realtor because people for, for who? Um, I was just at a small boutique brokerage. Okay. No idea what I was doing. And you know, back in 2010, like yeah. everybody was scared. Dude, it was over. Everybody had already gone bankrupt. Right. No one had money. Yeah. And so I'm over here trying to sell houses in Las Vegas, which got hit harder than everything. Right. And so there was houses that had sold for like $350,000, like two years ago, brand new. And then they're selling for like 80 grand. Yeah. And nobody wanted to buy them. Jesus Christ. And man. You know, you're talking like a 1600 square foot brand new home in Las Vegas. And I'm trying to convince buyers. I'm like, guys, this is a good Begging deal. Begging them to buy it. So yeah. This is a great deal. This is a great deal. Just buy it. And they're like, kid, you know, you're 21. You don't know what you're talking about. Right. right. And I was like, dude, I hate being a realtor. Right. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. So I quit being a realtor after a couple of years. 2015, I get into- Real quick, what's that yeah. home worth today? That $80,000 home? 500, <laughs> at least. Yeah. When Crazy. everybody was buying, everybody was buying. Then when everybody didn't buy, nobody, you, nobody, you couldn't convince anybody to buy. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You would if you just bought a couple of homes, you know, twelve years ago. Yeah, you said. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You'd be worth if you bought ten of those. You'd be worth five million bucks. Yeah, crazy. They'd already be paid off. They'd be paid off. You'd be cash flow. The income would be incredible. What are, What are those homes rent for? I would yeah, guess like yeah. that eighty thousand dollars. That eighty thousand dollars house is probably renting for. Twenty five hundred, three thousand. You right have twenty five thousand dollars a month in income, eight million dollars in net worth. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, so I ended up. Um, I was always good at finding deals. I was always a good negotiator. Um, but nobody, I, I just didn't know how to get money. Yeah, I had no idea that there was like private money and hard money yeah. and all yeah. these things. So twenty fifteen. Five years later, I finally learned that game. You're just grinding out on commissions for five years? No, like I quit doing real estate for probably after a couple of years. And then I just, dude, started doing side hustles. Okay. I just started flipping furniture, flipping uh, anything. cell phones, anything to make money. Um, I was still playing baseball too during that time. So it was like play baseball, flip crap, play mm -hmm. baseball, flip crap. So then 2015, I start flipping houses. I finally learned about hard money. You know, I ended up maxing out my credit cards to get a down payment with hard money. And then I flipped my first house in 2015 and made 25 grand. And wow. that was like the the turning point where I was like, whoa, uh -huh. dude, real estate, man, there's lots of ways to make money over here that are way bigger than just normal stuff. Mm -hmm. So, And yeah. what was the flip? I bought the house for $99,000 off the MLS, just deal right there on the market. Um, I did barely any work. I just got a good deal. Mm -hmm. Resold it less than 60 days later for 135,000. And you know, I was like, wow, that was the easiest score. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then now what's that house worth today? That house, I probably guess it's worth like 350. Uh -huh. Yeah. So do you regret selling it? I mean, I personally, people ask this, they're like, do you wish you would have sold or kept every house you bought? I'm like, but then I wouldn't be where I'm at. Like I needed the cash. You needed the dough to keep uh -huh. growing the business. So I don't regret and then, it. And then, you know, I had Pace in here and he was talking to me about subject too. And, and I was like, oh, wow, I never heard of that. And then some guy on the internet's like, oh yeah, you know, you, you I was on a clubhouse or something and some guy's like, you just learned about subject two last week. What do you know? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm, I don't, like, you know, when you're, when, when uh, the real estate I'm buying, we're not gonna do subject two. Yeah. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. It, it's like, not applicable. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to learn it. So I'm like, I'm learning yeah. new stuff. I don't even know really what a deed or a title is. Like, <laughs> I have a lawyer that figures out what, what exactly those things mean. I'm trying to find a good piece of real estate. Yeah. How much are you always learning something new? I'm always trying to figure out what I need to learn for what's like applicable uh -huh. to where I'm currently at. Right. So it was like back in 2015, it was everything about flipping houses. I'm right. like, how do I learn to find contractors and figure out these costs and yeah, yeah. find more money? So like, I was all in on that. Uh -huh. Then during COVID, it was like, yo, I'm all in on social media. Like everyone's going to be on just online watching stuff. Right, I got right. to learn. Did you have any products uh, when, you, when you started the social media? No. So why, why did you go there? You, want, you wanted um, to go there for what reason? So 
I was already flipping houses and uh -huh. I knew that social media was going to help this me is get three more. years ago. Yeah. Okay. I knew that it was going to help me get more deal flow. I knew it was going to mm. help me get more um, money for flips. So uh -huh. like I knew on that side, it was going to be good. I also, at that point, like I had a little course, but nothing crazy, dude. Yeah. Like I wasn't pushing education or anything, but I knew education would definitely come from social media. And so the more content I made, the more people wanted education, they uh -huh. wanted to invest. And then, you know, as time went on and I got better at social media, we started creating more businesses based on what my audience was telling me they wanted and what they were interested in. Yeah, you've truly had overnight success. See, <laughs> mine took 35 years. Yours yeah. took like freaking two, two and a half <laughs> years, dude. Well, I mean, we, we had to go through, you know, I mean, I tell people this all the time. In real estate, I mean, I've been in it since 2010. Uh -huh. So, like, I've been in it for... You know, not 12, as long as 12, you. 12, 30, 13, 13 years, years not, yeah. of figuring it out. And I mean, yeah. it took five years to flip my first house. Right, right, you know? right. That, that's a long time. And then, you know, social media is like, yeah, that happened pretty quick. Yeah. But, you know, once you get better at business and a certain thing, it makes the next thing easier. Yeah, you had something to share. So yeah. what was the first course? Was it was it related to real estate, I would expect? Yeah, yeah, just uh -huh. house flipping. It wasn't social media because you were just no. using, you were just using the distribution to talk about real estate. Yeah, yeah, and and it was all flipping. Yep. If you're watching this show, my guess is you're probably an entrepreneur who's trying to grow your business. And for me, the best thing I ever did to grow my business was build my personal brand on social media. It's allowed me to get more revenue, it's allowed me to raise more capital, and it's allowed me to hire better talent. And if you are not currently creating content for your brand, you're missing out and your competition is. So. If you want to learn to grow, my advice is to create a podcast. Now, there's a lot that goes into building a podcast and why I believe it's the best way. So I've actually created a free training that I want you to go check out. If you go to PinedaMedia.com slash podcast, you can go access the free training right now and see how a podcast is going to be the best decision to grow your personal brand today. So go check it out by clicking the link below and I'll see you in the training. So let's go back to that first deal. How would you have used the subject to? No money, assume a guy's loan. Yeah. Could you have done that back on that deal? Um, Probably not that deal, uh -huh. just because the seller probably wasn't interested in that. Uh -huh. You know, I think that, and I mean, Pace would know way more than Dude, me, he, but... he's like, he's like, oh yeah, every deal can be done subject to. <laughs> well, every deal can, but are they going to accept it? Uh -huh. You mean, is the seller going to yeah. accept it? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you're, I don't know. You At the end of the day, most sellers don't want it. They don't want to do it, right? But now you can make it appealing enough for them to do it. How do uh -huh. you do that? Well, you're going to like 10, pay 000. them way more money. Yeah. So it's like, well, do I want the deal for way less money and uh -huh. I'll just get my own loan or, you know, am I going to pay more money? That's usually how it goes. Yeah. So you don't think that that seller, because that would have saved you what? How much money did you pay for that first deal? I bought it for ninety nine thousand, and I and mean, you got when you got a loan and did the whole process. Yeah, I mean, or, I probably paid like five, six thousand bucks, and like yeah. you know, loan yeah. stuff. Yeah, and got a new loan. Yeah, hard money. Uh huh. Because if I knew, I mean, subject to back in the, when all that stuff was going to the banks. Yeah. Oh yeah, take over those guys' loans for Dude, sure. You could have taken over thousands of loans. Oh yeah, people easily giving them away for free. Right. I don't know if they were any good. They were probably upside down in their homes. Yeah, we. We've taken over a few subject twos in that scenario. Uh -huh. If somebody's in foreclosure, at the end of the day, they're they're getting foreclosed on either way. Right, so they don't right. really care. Yeah. And they're not going to make anything. So you offer them something, they're happy. Mm -hmm. And you can rebuild their credit for them and all the stuff by catching because you're up. Because you're paying them. Yeah. You're paying the loan. They're getting credit for paying off this mortgage. Yeah. So With your money. Yeah. So it's definitely beneficial in certain circumstances for a seller, but... I mean, I don't know about you, but if you're going to go sell one of your buildings and everything's good and it's got your, you're personally guaranteeing that loan or what, like, why would you? No, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't do it. I know. I'm like, no, but, no. but there would be a price you would do it. Like I'm buying a deal right now. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't think if, so. If your building's worth, you know, 200 million and somebody offers you 400 million. Because they want you to, you but know. Why would, nobody would do that. I right? know, but they're yeah, theoretically. But, but like I'm buying price. a deal right now. The rate on the deal, I should get a, I should, I should hear this morning that we got it. The rate on the deal is two eight five. Amazing. It's a ninety nine million dollar deal, and they owe fifty one. So I got to put forty something down. Okay. Forty seven eight. 
but the debt's so good. Yeah. And I'm not going to put a supplemental. That's how I won the deal. The other two groups are like, we don't put a supplemental on top of the whatever the loan balance is now, 40. Let's say it's 50. Yeah. And I said, I don't want a supplemental. I just want to reduce it down to the 50, keep the 285. It's for 10 years. I got yeah. eight years left on the loan. Yeah. It's going to cash flow a ton. Oh, it's going to be a pig. Yeah. Okay. Great property, great asset. It's got eight years left of debt. So, you know, I'm taking that loan over. I want that loan. Now, yeah. now if I owned it for four or five years, you know, would I want to still be on that loan? I mean, they're transferring the loan to me. They're not keeping the obligation of the loan. It gets transferred. Yeah. You're to me. assuming it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a difference, right? It's like if you're just taking over that note and you're now liable. And I'm liable. Yeah. They, they would never let me just, they Keep would them stay liable. liable. That'd be like, we but that's what that. subject two is. Yeah. In many cases. Yeah. Like you, yeah. they're still on the hook if you screw up. Well, hey, Pace, Pace is, come, you know, he, he he's like in it. And, yeah. And, and so, you know, I think he'll evolve like I have and like you have to like the different kind of assets. I think he's trying to buy bigger stuff with, with that, that concept. Yeah. What is your strategy right now for building your real estate? Yeah. So, you know, flipping was how I got started. And like you said, start to evolve. Um, you know, we've done funds too. So we've got over 500 units under management. Oh, good. good. Um, so we've raised capital. Once again, social media. Uh, all apartments you're doing, most of the apartments yep, now? Yeah, those are uh -huh. all apartments. You know, it's been hard to pencil out deals with the higher rates. Yeah. And, you know, I've thought a lot about this and I'd be curious to hear your take. I think I already know your take, but, you know, we're starting a single family fund. Okay. Because we already have the systems built out to get single family. Like we've been doing that for 10 years now almost, right? And so in Vegas, I just think back to 2010. Yeah. Imagine if yeah. I would have just bought oh, all of those houses, you know? <laughs> you bought 100 houses, you'd be... Yeah, like I watched... And you could have, by the way. Yeah. You were right in the middle of it. If I just knew what I knew now, I could mm -hmm. have totally did it. Um, but I watched Blackstone and all those guys come to Vegas and literally buy up every single mm -hmm. family home at the auction. And I'm just like, wow. I, I've sold to those guys. We've wholesaled and flipped directly to them. Yeah. I'm like, why don't I just... Keep my own deals. Yeah. You know, but, but has that market pulled back? How, what's the pullback been? 5%? Um, last year when everything happened, we dropped 10%, but okay. now we're already, already like, coming back. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, I mean, inventory's low. So, why you, so what, what do you think? You wanted to ask me a question about the single family thing. Well, I know you're not a single family guy. Like, what do you no, think? Dude, dude, like, like, if I would have, what you just said, when you brought me back to 2010, and, and you, you're buying houses for 90,000, 80,000, 100,000. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but what you would add to that today, if you went back or I would, I'm going to go get a hundred of these. Yeah. Back then I wasn't thinking about a hundred. I was thinking about, I'm going to get one. Yeah. Now I'm going to get a two, but I wasn't thinking about getting a hundred. Yeah. And I think that that's, if I could get a hundred. You do it. And have one guy manage all hundred and yeah. make, cut him in for a piece of the action. Then dude start doing, you know, Keep them slammed. Yeah. And I'm buying them. But but I don't know that you have that chance today. I don't I don't think that we have a housing crash. Elon came out and said, we're going to have a housing crash in America. And I love Elon. Mm. I almost never disagree with him. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't think you have one this, this cycle because no. just like you said, they came down a little bit and they're already starting to move in the other direction. Yeah. And I don't think we're going to have a housing crash either. But I'm just looking at this from the So you think time Elon's right. an idiot? Pretty much, man. The guy knows nothing. No. Uh, <laughs> that's, I, a, that's our headline. I was looking for a headline. <laughs> Ryan Panetta, uh, social media uh, uh, influencer, Elon thinks Elon Musk is an idiot. <laughs> no, he's a genius. But uh, he, it, it's funny because I was- But by the way, he doesn't own any homes. Yeah, I know. He's, he lives in his little boxable home. Yeah. Uh, no, it's funny because I was talking to, uh, last time I was in Miami, I was with Patrick Bed David. Uh -huh. And he was talking about the real estate market crashing too. And this was like, Nine months ago, yeah. I interviewed. I'm like, Patrick, it's not going to crash. Dude. Yeah, There's no way. He's like, it's going to crash. It's going to crash. Rates are going to be like 12% or something crazy. I'm like, dude, it's not going to get to that point. And, you know, obviously it didn't happen. Yeah. And well, you can go back. If you go back, there's a there's actually graphs of interest rates going up back in the back when I was growing up, 70s yeah. and 80s. Actually, pricing didn't come down even when interest rates were 20%. Wow. So if you look at the graphs, rates were going up, house prices were doing this the whole time. Yeah, people so, just kept buying. Yeah, so everybody thinks like they're just using a frame of reference. Yeah, yeah, but it's just now like, homes weren't five hundred grand either. No, they were twenty six thousand dollars back then. Yeah, yeah. I just think the next ten years we have uh, 
bro, all the all the guys that didn't buy real estate think real estate's going to crash. <laughs> right. That's true. They, they, they're looking for an entry point. Yeah. They they know they missed a, 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 a the, the tremendous amount of years. ten years of wealth. Yeah. It's going to happen for another ten years. And that's my whole point. Like, I don't care that the prices are. 400, 500 a day. Yeah. Where are they going to be in 10 years? Yeah, exactly. Can't you know. build it. There's no affordable housing. No. Uh, there's no labor. Yep. You don't have anything that says you can basically fulfill demand. Regulations are getting more expensive. Permits are more expensive. There's more buyers now than ever because you got hedge funds and all these capital groups buying. Yeah. You know, 10 years these ago. These other guys are just haters, man. Yeah. Kiyosaki, Bet David. These guys all, they. <laughs> I'm like, you guys missed the freaking greatest opportunity in in economics, yeah. why are you going to trash on it? Just say, I miss the obvious. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I also don't know why people, I don't know, kind of root for a crash. They're like, oh, when it crashes, then I'm going to get in. Yeah. It's like, if you couldn't predict the last 12 years, what makes you think you're going to predict it at yeah. any point, anytime soon? What is the, what, how much did you buy at the height back in, let's say, 20, 19, 20, 21? Did you, were you buying stuff? Yeah, we've always, so we flip over a hundred homes a year. So like- So you're still flipping? Yeah. We you still don't flip. keep anything? No, but I'll the, keep, the 500 that you own? Yeah, so I'll, I'll cherry pick single families I want to keep that, uh -huh. you know, are flips. Um, you know, we'll buy the apartments. You know, we got Airbnb. So we still do that stuff. But I think for me, I've been trying to really figure out what is going to be like my Sweet. big long-term strategy. Yeah, yeah. You know, is it going to be big multi? Is uh -huh. it going to be, you know, storage? Is yeah, it yeah. going to be development? Uh -huh. I'm really interested in development. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't, I'm curious why you guys haven't really We, done we will. We will. We're, will. We're going to tear this one down. This will be my first development deal. Oh, nice. There's going to be a swimming pool right where you are right now. Really? Yeah. So you're going to build like high it'll be It'll be 20 floors, oh. 320 units. Okay. Uh, this will be, I think the swimming pool is on the eighth floor. So we'll take this. This will be all parking okay. where we are. And then on the eighth floor, it'll be a swimming pool. Mm. We'll campus up with the, the office right there. It's going to be a really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like most of the like really top real estate guys I've seen are all developers. No, dude, they're not. They're not? No. So they're you, builders. They go busted. Okay. The builders want to be me. Okay. Most builders can't, can't hold. Okay. They can't hold the asset. They build it. Yeah. For, and then they flip. Yeah. They flip out. Yeah. I buy all my shit from a builder. Okay. So you be the They empire. build it. Sam Zell, the great Sam Zell, rest in peace, Sam. Yeah. He, the first 50 years of his career, he said, I will never be the first one. I will never be the first owner of the property. Mm. He was always the second guy. In. You build it, you fill it, I'll buy it. Yeah. Because he has the safest investment. The safest. Yeah. You don't so, have any of like the uncertainties of. Uh, inflation, labor, yeah. permits, regulations, interest rate fluctuations. Yeah. Uh, boom, you build, and all of a sudden we hit a ma major massive recession that lasts 24 months, and you can't fill the building. You can't get the rents that you thought you were going to get. Yeah. Uh, banks go out of business. You can't get the loan. Like, like so, there's so many risks. Yeah, it seems like the developers are the ones like- Suicide going. rates are higher with builders than they mm. are with investors. Jeez. You know, I can live forever, bro. Like, <laughs> like I go to sleep at night. That's why I was asking you about your worst deal, your worst apartment deal. Oh, my deal. worst deal. Your worst deal in apartments. In apartments. As opposed to your worst deal in flips. Okay. Compare those two deals. Yeah. Yeah, flips. We've lost a lot of money on bad deals on flips. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, on the apartment, the what's the one that you bought and you're like, man, I paid too much. Timing was not right. And you still own it. You know, the first one we got has cost a lot more renovation than we expected. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's been a headache. And then, you know, if renovations aren't done, then you're not getting the occupancy you want. So I actually, that one has taught me a big lesson watching you. Yeah, you're doing value add. Yes. Yeah. So And so like when I see you buy it already stabilized, I'm like, yeah, he didn't have to deal with this headache that I'm dealing with. Because, you know, the value add is pretty much like a fix and flip. Dude, it's it's work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. You got to get them out. Yep. I mean, explain to people what happens on a, how big was that deal? And uh, what what did you spend on the value? It was over 300 uh, units. 300? Yep. And nice size. Yep. We paid about 20 million for the deal. Wow. Good for you, man. Yeah. So that Georgia. didn't feel good. I huh? just celebrate. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we've. Were you surprised that somebody would give you a loan for $20 million? <laughs> 
I, I wasn't surprised. I expected it. Every time I get a loan, I'm like, I can't believe anybody trusts me with this much. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We, uh, no, we bought it and, you know, we basically had to raise more capital after, you know, the renovations ended up being a lot more and you, you know, you get into it, you finally get in the units and you're like, yeah. wow, all right. Uh -huh. You know, there's way more than we knew. Yeah. Yeah. And it just is what it is. It sucks. So, and then how's that deal performing? Right now, we're still trying to get it stabilized. Uh -huh. So that's the headache. Cash flow? No, not yet. Negative. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Because we have to get it stabilized. How long has it been? How long have you been in that deal? Um, about a year on one of them. Uh huh. I mean, we bought it with super low occupancy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like it was. So it's I mean, a C, that's why we C got property. Some, yeah. C location. Yeah. Yeah. So we it bought it. A, a problem owner, a, the guy before is a problem. Yeah. So yeah. we already bought it like knowing Yeah, but it, it was cheap. It was cheap. I mean, yeah. 20 million for 300 plus units. 150 grand a door. No. No. It was, it was like 60 grand a door. Wait. No, no. 300, 20 million into 300, 300 into 20 million. What's that? 60,000. Yeah. 60, yeah, it was like 60. Yeah, 60, yeah. 66,000. Yeah. So yeah I mean, what, what are the rents there, man? Um, About 900. Damn, I'll buy that thing from you. I know. That's why it's a good deal. But it's just, it's taking time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's an extreme value add. But then, yeah. like, we bought other ones in Iowa that, um, you know, one of them is right by the University of Iowa. It was uh -huh. already just college kids and uh -huh. rolling. And so that thing, like, from the beginning, uh -huh. just cash flowing and rolling. And so, like, you see the two different deals and you're like, all right, you know, one on paper is like this massive opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One looks like, you know, a good deal, but not like, this yeah. huge value add. Yeah. And you're like, man, one is like performing better. But then, you know, we'll see in the years to come. Yeah. It's a long time. You're so young though, man. If I yeah. were you, you know. Yeah. What I'm, would you do? Dude, I would be focused on, you know, I would be focused on, I'm 34 years old. I got a wife. How many kids you got? Um, two with a third on the way. Third. They're all yours? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> I, you know, I know you're doing great with social media. Yeah. And I know you're doing good with your courses. You're going to keep making money. Yeah. That's going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. I would bury all that stuff in great assets. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. I wouldn't buy any value add. Yeah. I wouldn't do any rehab shit. I wouldn't do, I would never do another countertop. I would never do another floor, another mm. bathroom. Fuck bullshit. <laughs> you know, I would buy stabilized. Like the stuff I'm buying, I would buy great asset. I'd focus on Vegas. Yeah. You live there. Yeah. I'd build at least a thousand units. I'd go find three or four or five, five buildings, 200 units each, raise yeah. the money for all of them, stabilize those properties and sit and wait. Yeah. Fill them up, keep them at 92, 93, 94% and wait for those rents to just keep chopping up. Mm. And then look up when you're 55 years old, you're going to be freaking rich. What? What made you realize that? Did you go through the headache of doing yeah, all that stuff? Yeah, I did all first? that other stuff. Yeah. And then you get to it, you're, you've done so much work and you're so scared of it. You finally get it. You're like, oh, man, I got a score. I'm going to pick up five million. Yeah. And then you sell it and you're like, oh, I got to go buy another building again. Yeah. All you had was a tax event. Yeah. I don't want a tax event. My tax event's happening. Your social media platform is your tax event. Yeah, it's all active. The other good. thing is your wealth building. Like, that's what I, I, I would just like. And you, but you think, I had to dispose. I had to get rid of this. I got to have twelve percent cash flow. I had to get rid of this. I got to make. Uh, you know, my entry's got to be so good. I know I'm going to kill somebody later. Because you might not. By the way, the, the stuff that I paid the most money for, I've mm -hmm. made the most money on. Mm. It wasn't the stuff I bought the cheapest. The stuff that just looked like you got a great deal. Like yeah, I'm like, oh like, man, my cost yeah. basis is so low. Right. Um, they did work out, but you know. They're more headache and less return is what you're saying. Well, I'm not buying some of the stuff. I mean, I yeah. haven't bought that. And if I go back 12 years, when you were buying that thing and in 2012, I bought thousand units here in Florida. It was B, B product yeah. in a B minus location, maybe a C plus location up on the coast. And um, what, about two hours, three hours north here, Daytona, uh, St. Lucie, little t tiny towns, tertiary markets. Yeah. It was concrete block. I paid. Fifty-eight thousand a door. Those are worth two fifty a door right now. Mm. I made two hundred million dollars on that deal, mm. but I still own them. I'll never, probably never sell them. Mm. There was only one owner before me. They were only ten years old when I bought them. 
I didn't do anything to them. I went over there and took a piss on the property. (laughs) Literally walked in, boom, boom, I'm going to buy this deal. Took a piss, urinated on the place, hadn't done anything since. Maybe we painted it, uh, power washed it or something once or twice. So are you just... And and then we just get the cash flow and wait for the rents to go up. The rents went from $800 in 12 years. They're probably $1,800 now. Mm. So are you just solely focused only on multi? We bought two. We bought two office. I bought this one. I bought one in Scottsdale. I might buy more office. But you're using office for yourself. But I might buy, buy more office as just in this has cycle. Nothing to do with your in business. this. Yeah, in this cycle. Because do do you do remote work? You have um, remote workers, or you, you? We have some remote workers, but we try not to. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a massive failure. Yeah. What do you think? I don't like it. Uh, why? People just aren't as productive. Yeah. There's no camaraderie. Yeah. There's no, you know, like you lose all the aspects of what makes like culture, you know? Yeah. Can you imagine playing baseball remote? <laughs> We're all just showing up on zoom. Yeah. And then yeah. like, okay guys, we got a game Saturday. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you run the place? I don't know. How do you trust? How do you know what your, 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 your partner can do or can't do or their weaknesses and their strengths? And yeah, it makes no sense. If you're not playing together. Yeah. It don't make money either. How much, how much are your workforces remote? One percent. One percent. But license, the, really, they're partners. Licensed partners, uh, other operations, other like, companies. I guess like we have a remote guy right now. We have trouble with last night. He, guy forgot to show up for a damn a meeting with uh, eleven hundred people. Jeez. <laughs> like this, you know, I'm shooting him in the head. Yeah. So, so you, who wants to do that? Your remote is so out of sight, out of mind, right? So, yeah. Is it just outside contractors that you would only do remote? Vent, uh, uh, contractors or 1099. Nah, but it's not even a lot of 1099s. I don't even think we have any of those. We have partners, um, maybe license. Yeah. Some guy that, like, they live in Dubai. Got it. They, they can't work here. Yeah. Right? But, I mean, my the, like the real estate. You can't run real estate remotely. You got to have people, ten, a leasing agent on the ground. Like yeah. that, that rehab you're doing. Yeah. Or you have somebody there every day. We actually had to fire the previous company. That's yeah. part of the problem. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but we had on-site management with uh, a well-established company, and they're just not they're not doing, doing the it. job. So we had to fire them and replace them. WealthCon's coming back to Vegas, January eighth to the eleventh. Now, if you've been to our events, you know how epic they are. We have the best time, not only with just great content, great speakers, but we have a lot of fun with the after parties and the masterminds and everything else. And number one, it's the, probably the best networking opportunity in the entire game. We have over a thousand investors and entrepreneurs at each one, and this will be no different. In fact, this is gonna be my favorite WealthCon ever. We've got some amazing speakers coming, people like Tim Tebow, Thatch Nguyen, Gabrielle Lyon, the list goes on. It is going to be an epic event, and I wanna see you there. So if you're interested in attending, get your tickets now because they will not last. Go to wealthcon.org and get them today. Everyone knows that my favorite way to build wealth is through real estate investing. That's the reason that I started Wealthy Investor where we've trained thousands of students. But here's the thing. I've noticed that so many people fail to get started in real estate because they're worried about the money. They don't know where they're gonna get the money to buy a house or flip or handle their renovations and things like that. And so they just never get started. I wanna change that. And that's why I created a brand new free course that goes over five different ways that you could buy houses without using any of your own money today. And I'm going to give you it completely for free. All you have to do is go to wealthyinvestor.com slash podcast. I've made it specifically for you. The moment you go to that link, you'll be able to go get access to it and learn how you could start buying houses today without any of your own money. And if you're somebody who already has a real estate business and who wants to scale, we want to help you too. You can click the link below and book a free strategy call with our team if that's you. Well, this is the other thing, and this is this is me and you talking right now, and the yeah. audience can take away whatever you guys want to take away from it. But the other thing that I realized with the C properties and the C tenants and the C rents mm-hmm. and locations is that it's harder to get people to stay on the job. Right. It's harder to get a good leasing agent. Yeah. And it's harder to get a management team because they're like, dude, this place is tough. Yeah. They don't even want to drive to it. Yeah. The nice shiny stuff, get the best leasing agent. <laughs> They're like, yeah, let's go. Let's go, man. I want to be here. Yeah. You know, there's got a nice gym they can work out in. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you are you changing your mind right now? Are you forming any decisions while no, we sit here and talk? Yeah. So like I was telling you, 
you know, I, I've, I've always watched what you've done well before, you know, we knew each other. And I'm like, why does Grant buy these crazy buildings, yeah. right? You know, when people say he overpays for these buildings uh-huh. and whatever. And then, you know, I, 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 I just think back to my own experience and I'm like, man, 10 years ago, people said that about Blackstone when they were buying yeah. all these buildings. I watched them do it in Vegas on all these homes. They would go to the auctions and they would pay 100% of market value. And I'm like, why would they pay 100? They're not going to make money. Yeah. And it was like Blackstone knew at 100% of value of that current value, it was like an amazing deal for a 10 year time horizon. Yeah. Didn't work as a flipper. No. You know, but a 10 year time horizon, it totally worked. And so, you know, I watched that and then I like listened to you talk about your previous deals from five years ago, 10 years ago. And you're like, yeah, it wasn't like the greatest, uh, people wouldn't have thought it was that crazy of a deal, but now look at it. Yeah. Right. And then I just think to, you know, watching what you're saying, watching what like the biggest real estate investors I know, they're, they're buying grade A stuff. And Dude, I'm like, Apple's probably going to buy Disney. Okay. Yeah. Facebook paid, overpaid for Instagram. Mm-hmm. Google overpaid supposedly at the time. Oh, I can't believe YouTube's paying, or Google's paying so much for YouTube. Yeah, they, it wasn't an overpay. But, but, but look, they're great assets. Warren, does, Warren Buffett says, look, don't look for the cheapest asset. Look yeah. for value in the asset. Look for an opportunity in that asset. And so, I mean, that's, would I buy value add again? Yes, I would, but I wouldn't go to C's. I wouldn't go to C properties. I would not go to C locations. that are con- probably going to continue to be C locations forever. Yeah. You know, unless some event happens. Yeah. And you have time on your side. Yeah. You know, and you have this other business that rocks. Yeah. If you were just doing flips, if you were just a real estate guy and that's all you did and you didn't have another income, maybe. Right. But I don't need to go through that. But, well, you can't turn that property around fast enough. Yeah. To, to ignore what you can do on social. Yeah. The opportunity cost. Yeah. You're going to be like, I'm, I'm going to go shoot some content today. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you can produce revenue. Mm-hmm. Today. Yeah. That, yeah. that you'll never get out of that apartment deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a long-term play. Uh-huh. No, I agree. I think, uh, you know, going forward. So will you still buy B? Yeah, I'd buy B. Okay. But, so B is your minimum. But if I were you right now, I'd be looking for, I would be looking for somebody that bought something in 2020. Uh-huh. I can't believe this is becoming a real estate show right now, but <laughs> I would be looking for somebody that bought on adjustable rate mortgages, Two two and a half years ago, yeah, they got, their rate caps have expired. Yeah, um, they probably have. They borrowed on an adjustable, and they have equity from another group. They syndicated the deal. I'd look for a syndicator group. Yeah, um, that offered probably an eight or ten or twelve percent preferred, mm-hmm. and they're choking. Yeah, they're choking on. There's no outcome for them. Yeah, they have to wait three years to get an outcome, and they won't. Right. They just tap out. Yeah. And then maybe go do a subject too, <laughs> which I doubt. I, they probably owe more than you could get a loan for. That loan's coming due. Yeah. And it needs to be paid down. Yeah. I have five loans that need to be paid down. Yeah. But I can pay them down. You just have the capital. Yeah, I have the capital. Yeah. So I don't need to call for my investors. I'll and just that's, write it. And that's what I did. You, you know, you call, you, you no, went to I, the, no, I had the capital to go and just, yeah. Yeah. And you should brag about that. Yeah. But it's expensive to do that. It is expensive to do it, but I didn't want to do a capital call. I'm like, oh, yes. I got it. I'll handle it. Yeah. And then you went and replaced the money with your other business. Mm-hmm. So your other business, like what, what is that? What is what, what are you trying to build over there? You know, it's funny because like I haven't tried to, it's all happened really quick, mm-hmm. right? So I haven't really had a plan you know, for the last couple, it's just been like, Hey, let's teach people real estate. Hey, people now want to learn social media. Let's create education for that. Hey, all these entrepreneurs are coming. Let's create education for entrepreneurs. And, you know, it's just kind of like grown into this big thing. And then what I realized was all of those, you know, people in our uh, programs that we're really helping wanted to learn about, or sorry, not wanted to learn, but wanted just different services related to it. Right. So it's like, you know, our, our real estate coaching program is called Wealthy Investor. And so many of them need all these other subsidiary services. They need tax. Right. They need data. They need Legal. lending. Mm-hmm. They need all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they're going to buy it from somewhere. Mm-hmm. If you can be the provider too, then, you know, not only are you helping them, but you're making money on that side. And then those people become 
you make them enough money, they become your investors on your deals, partners yeah, on yeah, your deals. Yeah. And so like, I just kind of like understood how the funnel of like, you, all right, it starts with social, uh -huh. yeah. then they come into education, you right. help them make money, they buy services, they invest, they become partners. And like, that's just kind of the game. Yeah. So, and, and it starts with what course? What, what, what do you, yeah, because so, I see you talking about like all kind of stuff on social. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, like I said, wealthy investors, probably our biggest one. Um, and you know, that started out as house flipping, but now it's like, Hey, we have Airbnb, we have wholesaling, uh -huh. we have subject to, you uh -huh. know, we, we can teach you how to just buy normal rentals. Now we don't cover multifamily and stuff too much, you know, cause we're definitely not the, the experts on that. Um, you can send them to me. Yeah. I'll send them to you. Okay. Um, but everything single family related, like yeah. we basically train at wealthy investor. Um, but then like what happened was everyone saw me get on social media and they're like, bro, how did you do it? How did it happen so quick? Like, teach me how to do it. I'm like, all right. So we created yeah, a program. Then they went to education on how to do social. Yeah. So we created a program called Wealthy Creator. Uh -huh. And it was like, all right, I'm going to give you my framework. Here's how I create content. It only takes me, you know, four or five hours a week. And like all the content you see me post everywhere, that's the amount of work it takes mm -hmm. just because of our system. And so, you know, we create that. Then we realize, oh, people want like us, to, like they still need the editors. They still need someone to post it. They need a team. Uh -huh. So we start a media company. Yeah. So we start a company called Pineda Media. And, you know, we go about and start editing videos for people, start posting for them, start um, literally like. What, what do you charge for that service? It depends on the package. Yeah. Um, I would say our average package is 4000 a month. And like, that's literally everyone getting, you know, one reel a day. You know, the, we'll post it on. You're, you're cutting it? Yep. We you're shooting it? I mean, they're in it. Yeah. yeah. So like uh -huh. basically what happens from start to finish is somebody gets onboarded. We learn about their business. So I'm like, you're like, yep, I'm Grant. I got these businesses. I'm trying to raise capital. Boom. All right, cool. We set up a time to go film just like this. We schedule like two to three hours with you. And we'll be like, all right, Grant, we got all these questions for you. Let's make some reels uh -huh. in short form. Oh, nice. So we'll make it like, and we'll pepper you with the what questions. I did, this is what I did as Lewis Curtis in Undercover Billionaire. Yep. Yeah. I've always wanted to build a business out of this. And yeah. So we did that. And then, you know, we get all the data or the uh, files. We end up editing them. Uh -huh. And so that's usually about 4,000 a month for that package. How long does somebody normally stay on that? I mean, we only started that like three months ago. So oh, cool. they're staying, they're yeah. sticking. Yeah, they're sticking now. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll see how churn is as time goes on. Yeah. But. So why, I mean, you can build that business if you got a hundred people paying you four grand a month. Yeah. You understand why that C minus property is going <laughs> Yeah. This business. Be like, I ain't going over there. Yeah. This is a much better opportunity. Yeah. It's it. It's immediate. Yeah. And it's recurring and it's yeah. higher margin. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, there's no, there's no piece of real estate I ever bought that I couldn't make, that I made more money on than I could producing something. Like an actual product or And selling it. Yeah. There's no, there's no better, there's no faster way to make money than just simply make money. Yeah. But those don't create wealth. And they don't give you tax benefits. And they, yeah. Talk to me. So, so like, <laughs> like that value add deal, when you, when you recapitalize that deal mm -hmm. now on the recapitalization, you don't get any tax benefits from that. Right. That's the nasty part of that deal. Yeah. But when you went into that deal, did yeah, it come we got with a big the, tax write off? Did yeah. you we share did those with the investors? Yep. Uh huh. Yep. So we all got, um, big deductions. What do I have wrong on the cost segregation? Because some people are telling me or trying to say online, hey, Grant Cardone's cost segregation and the depreciation and the write-offs he talk about, you know, basically knocking out the passive income is not real and it's not allowed by law. I had an accountant actually. <laughs> this 25-year-old accountant said, no, not, none of what I'm saying is actually true and can't be done. Yeah. I said, well, bro, I should be on jail then <laughs> for like 30 years. Because yeah. I've been doing this 30 years. Yeah. You, well, got, you have people calling you to be in jail like every week. Yeah, for something. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, Why do so many people want me to go to jail? Dude, I don't know. They're haters. They are haters, bro. Do you have these? Yeah. Do you have them like I have them? No, no. Not, in, not anywhere <laughs> close to what you have. <laughs> why, why do I get them? Why do I get so many? You tell me. Why do you think? 
I don't know. Why, no, you're watching from the outside. Okay, watching from the yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. Give, give me some advice. I want, this is going to okay. be the advice the, the Give true, me advice. The yeah. true unfiltered advice, uh, I would say, I mean, number one, people just don't like successful people. Like, okay. Uh, I use LeBron as the example all the time. Yeah. It's yeah. like, dude, LeBron's like the greatest. And you know? most hated. Yeah. Like, how do you not like him? Like, the dude yeah, is yeah, like a yeah. family man. Yeah, yeah. He's just, he's a beast. Yeah. But people hate him. So who knows, yeah. right? Tom Brady, the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's one. I think just that's going to bring hate regardless. Two, I think... Obviously, you're loud, <laughs> so uh, okay. it's going to so, rub some yeah, people this is the wrong the part, way. This is the part I need help on, okay? <laughs> some people are going to take it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then I think two or three, a lot of things you say also get taken out of context. Uh -huh. So, you know, when I saw the video of you talking about, like, you're a loser if you make 400 grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, Completely taken out of context, by the way. Yeah. And, like, I'm like, wow. I was in a room. Where the top guy made twelve million, yeah, half the room made over eight, mm -hmm. and the other, and there was a handful of people in the room that made four hundred grand, yeah. And the guy that paid me to go do that meeting, the CEO of this major insurance company, said, "Dude, could you please handle these people that make four hundred grand in this room?" I'm like, sure, I'll <laughs> handle them. I'm like, if you make four hundred grand and you're in this room, you should not feel good about yourself as a father and as a husband. <laughs> and this was twelve years ago. That was 12 years ago? That, that video was 10 or 12 years ago. Really? 11 years ago. Why did it like start that. getting... And then somebody grabbed it. Yeah. They just start scoring the internet looking for... <laughs> like, like, And everybody that hates the message... Oh, you know who picked it up was Barstools. Yeah, Barstools yeah. picked it up and tried to trash me. There's some guy over there that doesn't like me. Yeah. And, uh, he, you know, he's probably envious of me. Yeah. And um, didn't include that I was given directions to, these people paid me a quarter million dollars to come in there and confront their lowest producers. Yeah. I did my job. Yeah, you did. Right? And so uh, then, then it gets put out on the internet and there's one, there was one comment. Hey guys, Grant is not talking to you. <laughs> He's talking to somebody else. Yeah. Why are you guys taking this so personal? Yeah. Now, could I have said it a different way? Should I be saying things differently? When you see some of the stuff that I do, because you said I, yeah. it's taken out of context, but I, I'm asking you as a peer, yeah, okay, um, for peer review right peer now. Peer review. So I'll tell you, when I saw the video, obviously I don't have context, but yeah. I saw like, I guess the longest clip I could see. Uh -huh. And from what I assumed you were saying was, hey, if I personally made 400 grand, Grant Cardone, I'd be ashamed of myself. The and I would be ashamed of myself too. Yeah. Right. Like that, that ain't good enough for what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm like, to me, he's talking about his own standards. Yeah. But, you know, nonetheless, I think, uh, I don't know. The, the results speak for themselves. So why would you change it? Yeah. It's got you to this point. I mean, I, I, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I know, but I know there's something I'm doing to antagonize. To make people. To hit the hornet nest, you know? Yeah. Because I'll even like why in, is Mark Cuban and like other guys not getting the same kind of hate? I think I they probably get it too, dude. See, yeah. I don't know that you get hate. I don't know how you yeah. know I get it. I mean, yeah, it's just I don't see the hate you get. I don't, but I think as if, I'm sure Mark gets it. If I get bigger, then it will come. So that, oh, it's coming, bro. Yeah. So there's just yeah. no. I bless you <laughs> with a lot of hate. Okay, it's part of the package, man. I'm telling you, there yeah. is no way around this thing. I had a banker in here. Um, we were talking about interest rates and he'd spent a couple hours, but he owns the bank. And, 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 I, and, and before he left, we didn't talk about any of this other stuff I do. I had him in here to get, make sure he understands my business. Yeah. Cause he, he was all, we were on a phone call and he's like, dude, where's all your money come from? <laughs> I said, man, come to the office, man. I've, I've known you for 12 years. Come by here. This guy's lent me a bunch of money. I got a bunch of money with him. I'm like, you don't even know what I do. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do, man. I said, no, bro. You, you know what you see on Instagram. Right. He comes here. He's like, wow. He sees the marketing department. He sees the sales department. He sees corporate sales. He sees the classroom full of people. He sees the uh, the sales team. Like he sees all the the Cardone Capital. He's like, oh my god, man. Yeah. I said, bro, all these are separate divisions. Yeah. He's like, I said, do you see my deposits every day? And he's like, well, I see your account balance. Yeah. I said, no, no, see the deposits every day. That's cash money coming in. Yeah. And and so I said, you need to see the company. So we, we I explained to him the whole business. That was my bad, by the way. I learned something big time there. You got a banker, 
bring them to your company. Mm. Otherwise, they're going to judge you for whatever color you put in your hair last week. <laughs> what, how, your what, color, cut. what color you think next? No, I don't know, man. I don't know. A 10X red? I think you should put a big X. <laughs> put a big 10 on one side and an X on the other. There you go. Uh, I'll pay 10 grand for that. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, and so before he left, he's getting ready to leave and he sits down. He's, he had the other his other employees leave the room. He's like, I got to ask you a question. Why you do all this shit on social media? I said, what, what, what shit, bro? I, I said, what, what are you talking about? What shit? He's like, the controversial stuff. <laughs> like, why do you take on the vaccine? Yeah. Why do you take on the FDA and the WHO? And like, why do you take on transgender stuff? See, I know that's the part I do that antagonizes the Yeah. Rest. So why do you do that then? Well, I don't do it. I don't do it for social gain. Okay. Because I know there's a cost. Okay. Yeah. Now, now when he asked me this, he's a banker. Yeah. And he's my banker. So my answer was there's a net gain. Uh huh. I lose something to get something. Yeah. I, I lose an audience to get an audience. Yeah. To get and, a more loyal audience. Yeah. But, but I had to tell him something. Otherwise I look like an idiot. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just do I, it. Cause I don't, know I can't why. say, well, man, I was bored. So <laughs> I thought I'd take on the LGBTQ community. Uh, I'm bored. So I thought I'd take on Adidas and Gap. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so you, you, you know, now I could be, it could be that I'm a little bored sometimes. Yeah. I like the action. Dude. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I like the action. You like debate. You like, I love debate, dude. I love the fight. I mean, yeah. it's the thing about politics that actually interests me. Are you going to run? No, I'm just saying. Okay. Like, All right. Like, I like the action. I like, okay. like when you were playing baseball, dude, yeah. didn't you like the scrap? Oh yeah. Did y'all ever get in a, Did you ever have a baseball fight? We never had, we like cleared benches, yeah, but yeah. never oh, really? like a full brawl. Tell, tell me about when y'all cleared. I mean, dude, somebody where, got where hit. Where were you? Uh, I was in the dugout, uh -huh. you know, but somebody got hit and we thought it was coming. And yeah, yeah, it was, I thought it was going to go down, but yeah, everyone now, got held back. Dude, do you remember, I'm sure you remember the Astros yeah. uh, 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 hitting on the cans. Yeah, yeah. When you found out about that, what what would you think? I mean, to be truthful, I'm just like, in baseball, I've seen it for since the beginning of time, like Cheats. people cheat, <laughs> like yeah. steroids were such a huge part of the game. Uh -huh. People steal signs like people. It just is what it is. Yeah. Do you think they should have had their World Series trophy taken from them? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care either way. Yeah. I don't have an opinion on it. Yeah. Yeah. I was there for that game. Oh, were you? Yeah, dude. I was right there, right there. Watching. Just listening to the. I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't pick it up. Yeah. No, nobody would have. I didn't pick it up. That. I didn't get it. You know, I didn't get it. I didn't think. Yeah. But you know, it was, uh, I, I wanted to be a baseball player. So I love baseball, man. I love that. Yeah. Game. I remember you telling me that one time. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. You made it a lot further than I did. Well, but for both of us, yeah. it, it worked out. I don't think I could have thrown you out though. It sounds like you were pretty fast. Yeah. It's pretty good. Pretty fast. Um, okay. So biggest mistake that you've made, um, in social. If, social, if you could go back, if you could go back and do some anything over again, what would you do differently? And the same question for real estate. And so, I mean, the the, the answer for both is start earlier. Uh -huh. You know, like I wish I would have started both earlier, buying in 2010, <laughs> posting when YouTube just came out and Instagram, right. like it would have been great. Um, but I would say beyond that, I guess in social, um, one of the mistakes I made early on was like trying to be too perfect, mm -hmm. you know, and being like overthinking and like, oh, you know, I got to have the perfect script and the edit's got to be perfect. Right. And it's like, nah, dude, just put out the stuff. Uh -huh. And sure enough, like the more volume you put out, you start to get better. You start to practice, mm -hmm. get reps in. You start seeing like feedback of yeah. what people yeah. like. Yeah. And it just keeps making you better. H has the frequency helped you change your messaging? It's helped me like, become a better speaker. It's helped me figure out what topics work better. And yeah, for sure. Like I've, I've realized like, oh, people are not interested in this. Let's talk about this. Yeah. So hundred percent. Now, now do you ever think about using any of the controversy? Yeah. You know, I've thought about that a lot. I, I see you kind of playing with it a little bit every once in a while. Yeah. So, I mean, like I talk about faith a lot, which some people might think is controversial, which really isn't. But, you know, even like on the faith-based side, a lot of the the things that we talk about are directly related to that, you yeah. know, like the transgender issues, the, 
you know, some of these issues you're talking, the vaccine and other things, right? Like, um, I'm pretty much with you on most of the things you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't hold Twitter spaces talking about it for three hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you don't go in those rooms either. No, like, I just, well, I, I don't know. I don't know how you have time to do it. Dude, dude like, like one <laughs> night, one night I went into a room. I think the room was called. Is that what you do for fun? Like, you well, just... Because I don't have time to just like. I don't can you know imagine somebody says, "What do you do for fun?" I go, I go to Twitter Spaces, and, and that, that's I go what into rooms like. where they're majority black people, and I'm learning about white entitlement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what you do for fun, huh? So, no, dude, I go there because there's people. Yeah, there's people. There's action. Yeah, there, there's Debate. there's different views. Yeah, and and the, the the thing that the most dissatisfying thing to me about social media is that it's a one way flow. Mm. I dump something on Instagram. I dump something on YouTube. I dump something on Facebook, but I don't get any feedback. Right. There's no challenge other than some comment, some punk that would anonymously without a freaking avatar, by the way. Yeah. And if it is, it's never him. Yeah. And some false name. Yeah. That will take a shot at me. Right. I'm like, bro, that, that, that's not contact. Yeah. Contact is you see me in the, you see me. Mm hmm. At the store or at the restaurant, you're a piece of shit. That's contact. <laughs> I like that contact, you know? Yeah. Not, not, oh, you're a piece of shit in my comments. Yeah. I'm like, that, that's nothing, bro. Like, yeah. No, let's get the action going. Mm -hmm. Or I go online. Okay. Like I was online the other night. I didn't know this was going to happen, but it happens when you show up and you're with people and there can be a two way flow. Mm -hmm. This, this guy, what used to be a major CEO in a Fortune 50 company. Mm -hmm. And he's in a room mm -hmm. and he comes at me, calls me all this crazy shit. Was this uh, the T-Mobile guy? Yes. Yeah. Hadn't worked in three years. Yeah. When you were in my room, he was, uh, he was in too. The, the guy's so envious of me. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Talk yeah. about haters. Yeah. This guy, he watched me. He's watched me for probably 15 or 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then he watched me blow right past him. Yeah. He retired. I'm still working. We're, we're probably, he's probably younger than me. He ain't worked in three years. Probably can't get another job. Got blown out of a company. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trashing him right now. We're going to use this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Doesn't yeah. take care of himself. Uh, three, three divorces. Yeah. Uh, you know, angry, angry, it's like just venomous. Okay. Just mm -hmm. eating at him right now. And I freaking passed by this guy. My net worth just blew up. So he's in this room. And he's seeing all the shit I'm doing on social, watches everything, fascinated with me, obsessed. Okay. Yeah. And he's like, you're a fraud. You're, you're, what, what did he say about me? He's like, I'm scamming my, my investors. I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, do you have any proof of any of this? <laughs> uh, you're going to end up in jail. Yeah. This is happening in a Twitter space room. Okay. Yeah. Or a clubhouse room. And I'm like, this is great action. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. So. I said, bro, you are bordering on defamation right now. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I'm talking about real libel in this case, okay? Nobody here believes any of what you're saying. And mm -hmm. so I'm having this with this big dude, but me and him are just freaking going at it. Yeah. And so I find that extremely exciting. Now, that being said, I also don't like somebody calling me a fraud. I'm not. Yeah. A criminal, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I sent out $50 million last year to our investors. Okay. Mm -hmm. He, he, he kind of left that part out. Okay. Uh, we're probably in the safest, um, uh, investment vehicle in the world, multifamily. Mm -hmm. And then the next night he pops up into another room. I let it go. The first one. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Call me whatever you want to call me. I know it's not true. The next night he calls me a pedophile. <laughs> oh, jeez. I have pictures of you with children, young children. And you're a pedophile. I'm like, bro, nobody <laughs> believes this, right? So this is a guy. And what I took away from that is, Grant, keep working, stay busy, hang out with Panetta. Yeah. And leave this deadbeat alone. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Clip that piece. <laughs> Clip that. I'm going to put that up right there. And that's why I get shit online. Yeah. That okay? is exactly why you do. Because, because <laughs> and, and but, but let me just tell you, when I go to sleep at night, yeah, I, I kind of second guess it, but I feel, I know at the end of my lifetime, I'm going to be like, Grant Cardone stood for one thing. He stood up and he would hit back. Like when you guys yeah. unloaded those, those, can you yeah. imagine, Ryan, if you would have sat on the, in, in, in the dugout? Well, dugout, everyone else is out there. And you're like, I ain't going out there. Yeah. Nah. So I would hope that you would fight for me. Yeah. 
Okay? Yeah. So I'm holding you to that. All right. If okay. he comes in the spaces, you know. You, what are you going to sell him? <laughs> just look in the camera and say, John, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. I don't know the guy. Well, I'm telling you, piece of shit, deadbeat, past so, his prime, so, uh, this retired. Is, this is why you get in trouble, though, because like, even if there are lots of people like that, I'm not gonna go like antagonize. I'm yeah, just yeah. like, you're not worth like my time even like talking. Yeah, I about. think I think I think I, I agree with you. <laughs> I do agree with you, but I also agree that that somebody needs to stand up against the bullies. Yeah. And somebody needs to be an example to speak up. Yeah. And say, knock this off, dude. I don't want this. That's true. Like, I'll give you an example. You know the image of the tra the transgender parade. Not the image. No. Okay, let, let me show it to you. So, so I want to know, and we'll insert it. <laughs> I want to know, because they're like, I'm like, this is disgusting to me. Okay, I don't want my kids seeing this. I don't want to be. I don't personally want to see this in the streets. And I don't even know if you want to confront this issue or not. Even talk about it. No, we can talk about it. Um, but let me see. What's the one? The 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 one that's been going around all over the internet uh, recently. Yeah, yeah, the one where the guys. He's got a uh, he's got a damn leash around a man in front of him. Mm. The person doesn't have any clothes on except a G string, and he's behind him, looking like he's humping him. And they're on a goddamn parade, I think, in L.A. or something. Jeez. And I'm like, well, why does this got to be in the streets, man? Yeah. Like, can you imagine if we have a parade float? I have my wife naked in front of me. I'm behind her, got a damn leash around her neck. Yeah. It's crazy. That was, that's indecent exposure, man. Yeah. Like, don't, don't you want to stand up and say, stop this madness? Yeah, for sure. But you don't. No. Why? Why don't you? Um, Let me just see it. Let me just see it. I'm going to show it to him so he sees the, 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 the image. That, dude. You want your kids seeing that? Look at all the people celebrating. Look at all the kids, in, look like, at all the kids in the there? audience. There's kids in the audience, man. There's teenagers in the audience. That's There's 25-year-olds in the audience. And, and I could be in that. I don't want to see it. No, in the middle of the street. Does it look violent to you? No. No, do, do, what they're doing, the act. Is the oh, act. no, it's sexual. Uh -huh. it's, you see, it suggested violence and sex to me. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I hope you didn't get excited with that. No, you know, we'll, we'll have to end the show early. No. Um, <laughs> but but yeah. you see, see, that's why I can't. I see that, and man, I cannot. Not you can't let, it. yeah, you can't I, let I, it just sit there. Do you think that that happens with age as you like start to not care as much? Cause you, I've noticed that as I've gotten older and I'm not, Yeah. you know. I think it happens with money. Money and age. But I think some people won't do it with money. I, th I, th I think there's more people that have money that won't do it. Yeah. But I was inspired by that show, The Billion, the, the bil bil Billions. I haven't seen it. Where I've somebody it. asked the, the guy, what was the guy, the actor's name? Billion, billion. So his name was uh, that. Axelrod. Axelrod. Yeah, Axelrod. He said, "How much money is enough?" And he's like, "When I got enough money to say, you, I got enough money. <laughs> Fuck you money." I was like, "That that inspired me. That one line. I didn't even finish yeah. the season. <laughs> I got what I need." Yeah. Okay. So, how much money is enough money? I mean, I don't know, man. I I'm happy with where my life's at now. Like, yeah. I don't know. Money's never really like driven me to like achieve new things. Like I have, I have more money now than I ever thought was possible mm -hmm. for me. You know, I mean, I was making 1200 bucks a month <laughs> yeah. playing minor league baseball. So, so how much success is enough for Ryan Panetta? I mean, yeah. When, I, when, when do you say, okay, I'm good. I don't think I ever will. Yeah. I think you'll, I don't think I'll ever like feel like I've achieved enough. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just always going to be striving for whatever goals next. And then once I get there, all right, what now? What's the next big goal? Now it doesn't mean it's going to be financial. You know, could be entering a new season of my life where I'm just being the best dad yeah. I can be coaching baseball teams, whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, it could be, you know, now, now we're going away from whatever we were doing before. Maybe I'm not known as a house flipper anymore. Cause I'm just buying grade a apartments yeah. or, you know, I'm going all in on even bigger education and mm -hmm. like, you know, doing like, I don't know where my life's going to lead. And then, and is your, is your wife on board with the, the social thing? Does she like to do the social thing or is she more behind the scenes? Um, she, she doesn't like make content and stuff, uh -huh. but, uh, no, she likes the social stuff. Yeah. It's not like she's like feels invasive or anything uh -huh. like that. And the kids, will you ever get the kids involved? How, how old are the kids? 
they're young. My daughter actually just turned three yesterday. Okay, got it. And uh, my son's four. Yeah. So they're young. Yeah, they can't do it yet. Yeah. I actually, t- you know, it's funny. My wife and I were talking about that yesterday. You know, you ever seen that that kid Ryan's World? He opens toys up. Like he was oh, like the wow. he was the highest paid YouTuber at like oh, six gosh. years old. Oh my gosh. This kid opens toys. He was making like 30 million a year. Oh my gosh. Dude, at six years old opening toys. And I was like, you know, we could do that. Dude, <laughs> yeah. You know? And I was thinking of like, how could we do this controversial of, you know, like he's opening up like normal toys. Like what would really make people mad? And I was like, what if like we did a opening, like a, a channel of them, of my daughter opening up like Louis Vuittons. Or, wow. or something that's just like, why is this? Yeah, they'll hate that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, appreciate you being here. Thanks appreciate for taking you. your time. Yeah. Ryan Panetta, make sure you follow him. So this dude walks up and says, are you legit? I see these other videos made about you. And is it a scam? Is it real? And I'm like, bro, I've never lost money in real estate ever. Just like with haters, you mentioned it. Like people saying, is grand a scam, this or that. I 